Anthropics AI beats OpenAI's AI at a test of AI research. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are discussing kind of the shape and texture of what state-of-the-art looks like. We've got a story about Google Gemini outperforming other models on the leaderboard. And we're kicking off with this story about Anthropic and OpenAI in this AI research comparison. But really, I want to take a step back and contextualize this in terms of how individuals and enterprises are thinking about AI right now. Over the last couple of weeks, a huge part of the conversation has been dedicated to the idea of or question of whether AI models are plateauing, whether there is a slowdown in the rate of performance. It's why we talked about some alternative scaling methods and what the labs are doing to try to deal with this. In many ways, what I think we're going to see is if and as that plateau happens, the competition for model supremacy is going to be about more than just sheer state-of-the-art performance. It's going to be about product and user experience, it's going to be about customization and specification for task, and it's going to be about access to particular data and knowledge of specific workflows within the enterprise that make certain tools work better than others. Basically, I think that we're about to see an expansion of the way that we think about the competition for Gen AI supremacy. And so that's just a little bit of context and background before we get into this. The information's headline reads, Anthropic beat OpenAI in test of AI that performs AI research. Now, this came from independent researchers at the Model Evaluation and Threat Research, which is a nonprofit group, which is publishing later this week an evaluation of how LLMs from both OpenAI and Anthropic perform when they were asked to solve a set of seven AI research problems. This is more than just an idle test. As the information puts it, since the days of Alan Turing, AI developers have been captivated by the prospect of AI powerful enough to improve itself. OpenAI has already developed an internal AI research assistant tool to help its researchers work faster a possible first step in the development of AI that can conduct AI research on its own. Now, for AI safety advocates, self-improving AI is an indicator of something else entirely. But the point is that people are very interested in this question of whether AI can be used to improve AI. According to the information, in five of the seven tests that were run as part of this experiment, Claude Sonnet 3.5 outperformed O1 Preview. They also note that Claude won by what they call a wide margin in two of those seven tests. Of the two that O1 Preview won, One of those was also what they call decisive. One thing for those who are trying to gauge how far along the path to AGI we are, the information also reports that both models were no match for the top human researchers who took the same tests, who scored more than twice as high as the models on average. Claude was, quote, basically as good as the average human researcher in two of the seven problems, and O1 Preview was about as good as an average researcher in another problem. So what are the types of problems? The example they give, one of the problems involved writing code for a language model from scratch without using division or exponents, which are usually essential for that task. Another problem involves experimenting with traditional AI scaling laws, just like an employee at OpenAI might do, but using only a small amount of computing power. The tests are in part designed to give us a beacon and a benchmark for how far along AI development really is. Again, the information writes, these tests are designed to put human participants at a disadvantage. That way, even if AI models catch up to humans on these tests, that would still mean the models are less capable than top human researchers overall and would give the AI firms time to make adjustments to improve their safety. So again, summing up for those keeping track at home, AI still not as good as the top human researchers at AI research, but starting to, in certain cases, match average human researchers. Now, one other small thing from Anthropic while we're on the topic. Anthropic has been pushing really hard to get away from the world of prompt engineering and just build tools that help people improve their prompts automatically. At the end of last week, they announced, quote, the ability to improve prompts and manage examples directly in the Anthropic console. These features, they say, make it easier to leverage prompt engineering best practices and build more reliable AI applications. The prompt improver allows developers to take existing prompts and leverage Claude to automatically refine them using advanced prompt engineering techniques. This is ideal for adapting prompts that were originally written for AI models, as well as for optimizing handwritten prompts. So somewhat connected in the sense that increasingly we're seeing people ask the AI to help them use the AI. Now, one more story, which was from the end of last week as well. Google's DeepMind's latest experimental model has leapt to the front of the benchmarking charts. Known as Gemini Exp1114, the model has undergone testing on crowdsourced benchmarking website Chatbot Arena over the past week. It consistently scored better than ChatGPT 4.0, jumping 40 ranks from the previous Gemini model to the top of the leaderboard. It is now ranked in both technical and creative domains, topping the charts for both math and creative writing. It also overtook GPT-4.0 for the best vision mode. The only category where it wasn't the best model was coding, where it ranked number three behind GPT-4.0 and the O1 reasoning models. Notably, this is the first time a Gemini model has taken the lead by this benchmarking standard. The model is currently available as a preview on Google's AI Studio website. Logan Kilpatrick, the product lead at Google AI Studio, posted, Gemini super duper smart. Market research on new model names. 
Referring to Sam Altman's habit of quickly snatching the limelight back, scientist Casper Hansen wrote, What a great way to find out OpenAI will release O1 within 24 hours. Professor Ethan Malik wrote, Why are people confused about which models are the best choice for hard problems? I mean, don't the name GPT-40 latest 2024-0903 and Gemini EXP-1114 and O1 preview make it obvious? Stop naming AI like files on my hard drive. As for the model itself, though, he wrote, This was pretty impressive from the new Gemini model launched today. I gave it one of my papers and asked it to review the tables and to comment on the methods. It did a better job than previous Gemini Pro, though that wasn't bad. Claude was close, but didn't zoom out as well. The bigger picture, of course, is there are now multiple models that are remarkably good at understanding complex academic papers and underlying quantitative methods. Reading a paper like a PhD seems like a pretty impressive feat for us to take just in stride, as of course AI can do that. Part of what matters about that analysis, by the way, is that Ethan, among others, have suggested that part of the reason that it looks like AI performance is slowing down is that our benchmarks are just basically soaked at this point. Once you get up in the 90s, there's just not that much room to run. And part of the question is, do we need better benchmarks? Still, overall, it's hard not to feel like we are in a more incremental improvement sort of time in the AI field. I would suggest that rather than be concerned about this, especially if you are trying to integrate AI into your business, use this breather as a chance to actually figure out how to use what's already available, which is so transformative in and of itself. I have a feeling that we will not be in this sort of moment for very long and that punctuated equilibrium will be back in no time flat. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.